Howdy folks, Chrome has had a big update, 1.3 is out, and with that comes a lot of performance enhancements, which makes it possible to run an entire 8-bit computer in Chrome. I've been working on building the Ben Eater 8-bit CPU, you can go find that at the link in the description below. It's a fun video series too if you want to go follow along learn more about computers. I've been slowly building that, I haven't got quite finished yet, but I, I've had the, uh, the clock, I can turn this on. I've got the clock, and I've got the A register, the B register, the instruction register, and was just starting on the ALU, and that's as far as I got. But the creator of Chrome was nice enough to make a video and provide a file of a completed 8-bit computer that you can go tinker with. So I'm going to fire that up and also show you a, a big mistake I made that made me look really dumb so you don't make the same mistake. Okay, so I've loaded up the file. This is just as it is when you get it from the video that'll be linked down in the description. Uh, it doesn't have LEDs and stuff like it does in the video, but it is ready to go. And the EEPROMs are blank. So you have to program the EEPROMs for this to work. And the mistake I made was it takes a lot longer than I anticipated to program the EEPROMs, so I was pulling them off before they were done. And uh, I think he shows this in the video, but I'll go ahead and show it as well. So we want this switch to be one because we're going to program the first EEPROM here on the left. And then this is EEPROM number two. So we just grab this. We put it over here on the programmer board. And you can see I got it misaligned a little bit. So we'll pull that over. A little tricky sometimes getting it lined up. Just make sure this last pin is lined up with the black wire for ground. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the logic so we can watch the EEPROM get programmed. Now we just hit reset on here. And we set and watch it right out to the EEPROM. Here we go. All done. So thanks to the author for uh, helping me out in the comments. I didn't realize how slow that was going. And his suggestion of turning on the logic made the light bulb come on. Like, oh, I was pulling that off before it was done programming. So I didn't have all of the op codes. So now we can stick that back over here. Oops. Make sure it gets in the camera. It's a little fiddly. Make sure that gets in the right spot. And it is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up my save. Well, I've added some LEDs and I've already got the EEPROMs programmed. So this is my version. It's that last circuit, but I've just added some LEDs to make it easier to see what's going on. So I've added LEDs for the bus. I've added LEDs uh, for the RAM as well. And uh, that's just handy for when you're doing things and troubleshooting and also seeing how it works. One thing I ran into is if I didn't use current limiting resistors, it seemed to kind of bog down the computer and do weird stuff. So I did go ahead and add in resistors for all these LEDs. Also on the settings here, I've got my simulation frequency at 300. So depending on how your computer goes, you can raise that. I think the default is 200. I bumped it up to 300. Could probably go more, but that's what I've got it set to. So let's program a... A, uh, a little program in here in the RAM. Uh, he does this in his video as well. I'm going to do kind of my own take on that. We'll just show you how this works. Also, switching back and forth between select and whatever this is. What's it called? Interact. Q and E. Little shortcuts there. So I'm going to turn the power on. Turn the clock on. And it's running. I don't think it's running anything because I don't think it saves the RAM when the program is closed. So you can see nothing is happening on the display. It's basically just free running. So let's turn that off. And I'm going to zoom in a bit here on the, the RAM section. And I went and put some labels over here with the program that we're going to add in. And I've had some weirdness that I haven't really troubleshooted to see where it where it's going wrong. But a lot of times the first memory location will end up being zeros. It gets zeroed out. So I would just go ahead and set the first memory location to NOP, which is all zeros anyway, and then it doesn't matter. So that's why my first 
is a knob. We're going to switch this over to program mode for the RAM, and we're just going to say, yep, that's, that's all zeros. And if we hit uh, 1 here, we're going to put in a load from address 8. So we need uh, 4 and 5. We hit the program button. We can see that's in RAM now. If we go back to 0, so when you're in programming mode, this address, it'll show you what's in RAM over here. So if we go back to 1, there we go. So then 2, we're going to output to the display. So we need that, and then program that in. Just running on down through here, then we're going to add what's at address 8. So that is that, and then that. Program that in, and then we come down to address four. That's going to be another output. Program that in, and then we have a jump. And we're jumping to three. Oh, I don't have that quite right. I didn't click. Oh, there we go. Yeah, one, one, one. There we go. All right, so we'll plug that into uh, five. There we go. And then we need to program our value. What are we going to start with and then add? So my program just says load what's in memory address 8. Right now is 0. And then also just keep adding that number. So for my purposes, I'm going to set it to 1. There we go. And then you can just run through here and make sure it's set what you're expecting. And then we'll run it. So we're going to turn this back off of program mode. We're going to hit uh, reset and turn the clock on. And we should have a counter. There we go. So it'll just run until it overflows, basically. Uh, eight bit number. It'll just keep counting up. So I'm probably going to make some refinements to this and uh, tinker with it. Thanks again to the author of Chrome for providing this. It saves a ton of work. I was about maybe a third of the way maybe more, a little more than a third of the way through doing my own. It, just, it takes a lot of time. So I appreciate him sharing this file. Also helping me out in the comments when I was a big dum-dum. So make sure you get those EEPROM, EEPROMs programmed all the way, and then it works like a champ. So I will make my file available if that's okay with the author. I've, I'll clear that with him first. I don't know if he wants me to sharing or not, but if he does, I'll make this available with the extra LEDs on it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, have fun. Tinker with it. Let me know what you've done with it uh, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Take care.